it's an interesting combination of magic, a little bit, and mathematics. We start off with a deck of cards and I shuffle them. Watch closely how I actually shuffle. So I start shuffling like this, but I'll show it to the camera. In practice, I dropped a big clump of cards from my right hand last. Those were the cards that were originally on the top. They're still on the top. I have shuffled much of the deck, but I haven't disturbed the top eight or nine cards. Actually, six of those cards are very special. They're cards that I wanted to be on the top. These are magical cards because they have magical mathematical properties because of the numbers that turn up. I'll show them to the camera. One, two, three, five, eight, and king. Well, king is 13. So it's one, two, three, five, eight, and 13. I'll show it to the ladies. One, two, three, five, eight, and 13. Have you ever seen those numbers in an interesting way in a math? Mathematics class? The Fibonacci numbers? They are, in fact, the world famous Fibonacci numbers. I was teaching a class here at Spelman in January 2008 where I was teaching the students about Fibonacci numbers and I discovered that you could do something new with them, which is this magic trick. I was teaching from a book called The Heart of Mathematics. It's a wonderful book by Ed Berger and Mike Starberg. And in the section of Fibonacci numbers, I learned something that I didn't know before. First of all, let me tell you what everybody knows about Fibonacci numbers. If you add up two of them that are beside each other, you get the next one. So 1 and 2 is 3. 2 and 3 is 5. 3 and 5 is 8. 5 and 8 is 13. So you see that pattern there. When you add up any two, you get the next one. These two add up to this and so on. That's what we all know and love about the Fibonacci numbers. But what's also interesting about these numbers, and it doesn't work for any old numbers you, you start with, is that if you add up two of these and tell somebody the total, they know which two cards you must have added up. If I had uh, ace, two, three, four, five, and I said two of them add up to five, you wouldn't know if it was the one and the four or the two and the three. But with these cards, if there's a total of five, it has to be the two and the three because there is no four in here. Earlier we had an example where the total was 15. 15 can only occur in one way using these cards, and that's the king and the two. Now the suits have nothing to do with the mathematics, but I'm using six particular cards. I actually memorized the suits ahead of time. I've been using the same suits for many years doing this trick, so it's not too hard for me to do that. So I have these particular cards on top. I start by mixing them up. I deal a few to the table, and then I genuinely mix them up, and I say, pick any two cards. It doesn't matter which two you pick. I'll know what they are, and then I can find them in the deck, and I pretend that to see their fingerprints. There's various ways you can reveal the cards, but I'll be able to find them because of the unique mathematical property of Fibonacci numbers. And I call that trick a pack of little fibs. I did, in fact, tell a little fib at the beginning when I said, I'm shuffling the cards. Sorry. <laughs>